best in your career. Nobody can have a career as successful as yours is and has been without A, talent, and B, management. management. Yes. Serious management. Yes. You met a fellow, a very flamboyant, eccentric individual by the name of Paul Mesa in the 80s, mm -hmm. and you decided to work together. He became your first manager. How did you meet, and why did you decide to work with this guy? Well, we, um, I was a student at Ottawa U. I was studying physiotherapy and playing ice hockey for the varsity team. My life was uh, very different. I started writing music at 13 years old because I found out about girls and it was much easier to get closer to them and, well, actually get them closer to me uh, by writing songs and singing than actually talking because I was a very shy guy. And, I, see, and, and see, I, I'm learning. See you. <laughs> okay. And, and um, I you know, been writing for basically for myself and then I met this 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 fellow. I uh, was playing ice hockey with in Quebec City and his uncle was actually um, at Paul Vincent and uh, uh, he basically just came up to him and said, well there's a guy that plays hockey with me and writes songs and we play together once in a while, play guitar, write tunes and, and here's your demo. You started out in the 80s, you were in the same boat as, as these kids in the audience or on stage. Not kids, but you know what I'm saying. Um, what were the challenges you had back then, being like one of the first to actually break through? One of my first challenges is I did not have a point of reference to look at to see what's going to work, what's not going to work. Um, I had nobody older than me to look at. All the artists from Toronto who who were older than me, they were like party rocket MCs, that was it. Like I was one of the first cast to make records, so there was no template of what to look at to see this is what you do. So I just looked at my brothers and sisters in, in New York. That's all we knew, because Toronto geographically, we, we saw ourselves like baby New York. So that was it, man. And, um, but I knew at, at a young age that um, I never wanted to wait for opportunities. I believed in making opportunities. So when I saw much music, have videos played, I came up with an idea that if I can get a video played on much music, and this before I heard about Video Fact or anything like that, that wasn't popping back then in 1987, 88, but I said, maybe I'll go to my high school and shoot this little little video. So I put like five grand, I put two grand in, my man Farley Flex, his mom co-signed a loan for me for three grand. I shot at my high school, I rented my tuxedo because I couldn't afford it at the time. I went to like Steve's Music, I rented a cello, you know what I mean? my school and we did it like that it was really like and i felt proud the fact i got this on like light rotation on much music you know what i mean that was big to us right and from that it started steamrolling but it showed me that the energy that kids have right now is the same energy you, you don't wait for opportunities you make opportunities and i think right now is a good platform uh to make that happen you know so <laughs> 